Hello, dear book nerds. It's Amber here at the top of our show to give the world's biggest thank you to Julie and Katie, aka one of the best sisters a girl could ask for, our two amazing subscribers on Patreon. I sincerely can't keep this show going without the support of listeners like you, as this show takes a great deal of time and effort for me to put together every week. So if you enjoy what I do and would have the financial means to do so, I truly hope you'll consider heading on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash bndpod and becoming a patron for as low as $2 a month to start getting perks like ad-free episodes a day before anyone else, bonus shows like the Book Nerd Hall of Fame and Storytime, and behind-the-scenes content, not to mention getting your very own shout-out at the top of each episode. Again, that's patreon.com slash bndpod. We hope to see you there! Page 7, September 18th, 2020 Hello everyone, and welcome to the Book Nerd Diaries, the bite-sized, bi-weekly audio journeys of a bookworm through an endless to-read list. My name is Amber, and I can confirm that the rumors are true. I am the Book Nerd. Another thing that I can confirm is that you all, dear listeners, are wonderful. I am incredibly grateful, first of all, to everyone who has taken the time to simply press play on our show. We are, as of this moment, incredibly close to reaching a milestone 200 plays so far across all platforms, a feat we couldn't possibly have reached without your amazing support. Audience sizes and the number of plays we get are how potential sponsors find shows like this one, so please keep up the incredible work, guys. Secondly, I would like to thank all of the wonderful souls who have taken the time to leave us a 5-star rating or positive review on iTunes, which is the best way to help little shows like ours reach new ears and make our way onto the podcast charts. This week, I would like to give a special shout out to iTunes user Moma Labs, who left me this as my very first review. Super amazing podcast with the best host. Highly, highly recommended. Thank you so much for the kind words! For those of you like me who are using Android devices and do not have access to Apple Podcasts, don't despair. You can still spread the word by sharing our pod on our social media pages, which you can find links to in our show notes, as well as telling the book and podcast lovers in your life about us. In the end, free podcasts like this one you're listening to right now live and die on listener word of mouth, so sharing is caring, everyone. Now, that's all of the business we have for you right now, I believe. So the time has now come, dear listeners, to get our book nerd on. Dear fellow book nerds, I am unspeakably excited to be able to mark this episode as the unofficial starting point to the road on that most wonderful time of the year, Halloween. To kick things off appropriately here at the Book Nerd Diaries, the book that I will be discussing with you today is the wonderfully spooky ghost story, The Curse of Misty Wayfair, by Jamie Jo Wright. This tale follows two women, Dia Reed and Heidi Lane, who are both drawn to the sleepy rural town of Pleasant Valley, Wisconsin, to solve the mysteries of their past. Though these women are separated in time by a century, they both uncover secrets that they would not have imagined and come face to face with a local legend, the vengeful ghost of a woman named Misty Wayfair. The story of how this particular book found its way to me is actually a pretty unique and wonderful one. To go a little behind the scenes for you, my brother-in-law, Sean, actually knows author Jamie Jo Wright personally, and he and my incredible sister Katie, who is actually a patron of our show, were kind enough to actually stop by and hand deliver this and a couple of her other books at my house for me to read. I still need to finish the other two books, but I highly enjoyed this one, and the means by which it came to me, makes this particular episode a very special one. I don't wish to give away any major spoilers for this book, in case anyone out there would like to check it out for themselves, and so it is my pleasure to head on over now to the highlight reel, where I give you the three aspects of this book that I enjoyed the most. Those highlights, in no particular order, are... Number 1. Wisconsin. The state in which our story is set. Being a lifelong Wisconsinite myself, it's always particularly sentimental to see my home so lovingly reflected in a piece of media, in a way that can only be properly managed by a fellow resident of the Dairy State. 
In particular, there's also a particular focus on the tight-knit nature of a small Midwestern community, and all of the complex social structures that ultimately come with living in a place where everyone knows just about everyone else by name, for better and for worse. Number two, time hopping. This book moves back and forth between two separate timelines. First, we are introduced to Thea Reed, whose story is set in 1908. She is a freelance photographer who specializes in portraits of people who have passed on, and has come to the small town of Pleasant Valley, Wisconsin to ply her trade, as well as investigate clues linked to the town's mental asylum that may help her discover the fate of her mother. Our second story thread, set in the modern day, follows Heidi Lane, our other protagonist, who is summoned to Pleasant Valley in order to help her sister run the family's resort, as well as care for their mother, who is battling dementia. As time goes on, both of our protagonists start to have things happen to them that they can't explain, such as mysterious messages written on mirrors, and most chillingly, sightings of a female figure who suddenly disappears when they look closer. Their stories converge on this point, as they both seek to find the truth behind these occurrences. Is someone trying to scare them away, or are they truly being haunted by the spirit of Misty Wayfair, the area's most famous ghost? I love the fact that this book can so seamlessly balance two separate stories in two separate timelines, then weave them together as a cohesive whole in a way that is never confusing to follow, which I deeply appreciate. Number three, the spooks. I have to admit, as much as I adore Halloween as arguably my favorite holiday of the year, I tend to be pretty sensitive when it comes to scary fictional content, especially slasher films. Excessive gore and seeing innocent people be murdered on screen gives me absolute nightmares, even if it is fictional. So around Halloween, I tend to lean more towards stories that rely on the subtle thrills of suspense. I was very happy to find that The Curse of Misty Wayfair meets this criteria wonderfully, constantly putting our two heroines on their toes as they try to figure out what they just saw out of the corner of their eye. I would definitely recommend this book to anyone out there who, like me, appreciates a good ghost story, such as the amazing but deeply scary Netflix series The Haunting of Hill House, or the gothic melodrama of the works of Edgar Allan Poe, or just anybody who is looking for a good scare this Halloween season. For even more spooky content in podcast form, I would like to give a special shout out to the amazing show Scared to Death where hosts Dan and Lindsay Cummins scare each other with tales of the paranormal, and Astonishing Legends, the show where duo Scott and Forrest offer deep dives into history's most famous occurrences. I love them both, and they are the perfect listen on those chilly fall nights. We've gotten to the end of our main discussion, dear fellow book nerds, but don't go anywhere just yet. Unless, of course, you need to take a moment to refill your drink or grab a snack, in which case we'll be right here when you get back. Either way, we'll return soon for more Bookner Diaries after this quick break. Are you looking to create your first podcast like I have, but don't know where to start? Then I would like to introduce you to an amazing tool called Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's a completely free service that offers creation tools to let you record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, then distributes your podcast so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. What's more, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place, so what are you waiting for? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And we have returned, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Let's get on with our show, shall we? It is now time, dear listeners, for that ultra-nerdy part of our show, The Trivia Corner, where I give you a special trivia question related to today's book. Since we delved into the realm of the spooky with the Curse of Misty Wayfair today, we're going to keep that going with a question about not scary books, but scary movies. Your question for today is... What is the highest grossing horror movie of all time? Is it A. Silence of the Lambs, B. Jaws, or C. It? Your answer is C. 
According to articles by Forbes and Mental Floss, the 2017 film adaptation of the iconic horror classic Stephen King's It slid its way to the title of current highest grossing horror movie of all time based on U.S. domestic box office gross, raking in over $327 million. That, my friends, is no joke. I will note, though, that Forbes also gave another list where income is adjusted to reflect 2019 movie theater ticket prices, in which Jaws comes out on top at $1.154 billion in earnings. Whichever list you subscribe to, it's clear that people sure do love a good scare. We've just about reached the end of our episode today, dear listeners, but before I go, I would like to leave you all with your listener poll for this week. As fall is just around the corner, I would like to ask you all, what is your favorite warm drink when the weather gets cold? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please head on over to our Facebook or Twitter pages, which will be linked in the show notes, to weigh in, and we'll read out the results in our next episode. With that, another entry in the Book Nerd Diaries is now finished. Until next time, everyone, take care and keep on reading. The Book Nerd Diaries and its associated shows are written, edited, researched, and hosted by me, Amber Wilchin. Thank you to Kevin McLeod for the use of our theme song, The Show Must Be Go, and Sincerely Media on Unsplash via Anchor for our wonderful cover art. But most of all, I'm truly grateful to you all out there for listening. If you have the financial means and would like to send some money our way to help keep the proverbial lights on, we hope you'll become a subscriber to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash bndpod, or you can donate a few dollars to our Ko-fi page at ko-fi.com slash bndpod, and we'll be happy to give you or someone you love a shout out on our next episode. If you'd like to connect with us online, you can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at bndpod, Facebook at Bookner Diaries, or you can email us at bndpod at gmail.com. Any comments, questions, or book recommendations you may have to send my way are always welcome. Until next time, everyone, please take care of each other, and don't forget to support your local library.